I, I just have to paint. I don't have a choice not to paint because if I go two weeks without painting, I get nervous and shaky, so I have to paint. And then after I paint, I just calm down, feel so good. It's nice. Really, it's, I don't know. Why, what is that? Really? I don't know. Other people like that? <laughs> I don't know. At 83, Tom is still an active member and painter and the last living original member of the Watercolor Society of Oregon. I always wanted to be an artist, but my, my dad was afraid he was going to have to support me, so he, he didn't want me to be an artist, yeah. so it was tough. I always had to do art on the side. I was really touched um, by reading one of yeah. your, um, one of the things you yeah. filled out on a form for the artist <laughs> statement that asked what your uh, influences were, your artistic influences, and alongside Klimt, and Monet, you listed Oregon. That is right. Boy, what, a, what a beautiful place. You I know mean, you're not a native. Yeah, How has that affected yeah, when, your heart? Oh, when you come from Wisconsin and see these oceans, the first thing you do is try to paint an ocean. And <laughs> maybe 10 years later, you figured it out. <laughs> I was able to talk with him just before his last major exhibit at the Benton County Historical Museum in Philomath, Oregon, May 2015. Yeah. Well, I could tell you were a plain air painter um, because all of the pictures in the notebooks yeah. are you outside yeah. painting. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, and yeah. there are quite a few of them, Tom. Oh, yeah. They had one of me up in Portland painting dragon boats. Oh, yeah? And I make noise while I paint. Oh, you do? Oh. <laughs> so they, they enjoy watching and listening. Well, well I... When I paint on location all the time, so what that does for me, when I look at one of the paintings I painted on location, I remember what's happening here. I can remember the sounds oh, wow. there and what happened the whole time I was there. So oh, it's just reliving really that thing. Oh, that's wonderful. I, I, some of these paintings I hadn't seen for uh, several years. I see them now and I just, all, I feel the whole thing and know what's happening and just, Really, really gets me. Yeah. In its 50 years of existence, the organization has grown in both size and professionalism. Its juried membership now stands at nearly 1,000 and is a showcase for the works of many of Oregon's most promising artists. Yeah. <laughs> well, first grade, I, kids would come home and look at my drawing. I drew them Superman. That was a big deal. <laughs> so I drew Superman. Then my first watercolor <laughs> show was in third grade. Then I won some city contests, and I went into state and won some there. So, so when, you had a, when you had a show in the third grade, where was the show? In the hallway. Of the <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a gallery. <laughs> in the hallway. That's, that's a pretty good gallery yeah. in the hallway of the school. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the reasons I started, started this, to mm -hmm. have an opportunity for me and others to show painting someplace. Its purpose was to give artists a place to show their work by holding regular exhibitions around the state and to provide art education for artists and the public. Elaine Hoffman was also an original member, making her daughter Linda a second generation member. Shown here are three generations of Hoffmans, grandmother, mother, and Linda painting together. Linda and her mother participated in WSO together for 23 years. My mother joined in 1967 and was a member until her death in 2005. My grandmother and my mother really put a lot of faith in me and helped me uh, find my voice. Like many WSO members, Linda has contributed to the organization in numerous roles and is one of a few who have received the Outstanding Service Award for her volunteering. Networking and friendship with other artists is one of the best benefits of membership in WSO. Recently, a critique group that has been meeting regularly for some years talks about the changes they have seen in the organization over their years as members. If you really look at the list of the jurors we've had, oh, so they are the most top-known Mm -hmm. well, they have has... books, they've been, so, I mean, mm -hmm. like Gerald Palmer, he's still teaching and he's I know what. 90 or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at this, it's, wow. Catherine Chang Lu, Carol Barnes, Al Bruyette, a bunch of the really famous California school 
watercolor mm -hmm. painters who are deceased now. Milford's we Lawrence, had them. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Milford Torrance. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, I think our society Rick's has a great reputation, mm -hmm. and we put on a nice show, and I think we hold our own with all the national groups. I really I do. So oh, I think we're above. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've juried a lot of the state mm -hmm. watercolor societies, and there's nothing I have found that, that were, were very high quality. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember that we used to be able to enter two paintings in the mm -hmm. show. And I think they had to be shrink wrapped, didn't they? They were shrink wrapped, not free. No, not yeah. free. And that was also no. kind of a nightmare too, because we were shipping them all over, and they would be, get damaged. They but it was passed. always us. Yeah. I remember when we were we used to jury for new members. You know, they would yeah. submit yeah. things, and you'd look yeah. at the slide. And I can remember one time we said, "Now, did the same artist paint that?" And I'd say, yeah. "Yes, it's. You see, it's on the same garbage can. They put it <laughs> <their laughs> against the garbage can." So, yeah. Uh, uh, Originally, when we entered, we, we actually took the paintings to the yes, place. Yes, yes. Oh, no absolutely. image. We, we never right. sent images. No images. It was no. the real. Right. Oh, yeah. that. And then when we started sending images, they were slides. <laughs> yes. but, and I know because yeah. one, I just saw one of my paintings that was an old painting of slides in one of the catalogs that was backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and you could get the, you could do the slide accidentally backward. Mm -hmm. But you can't, you can't do digital. You know what we did, though, for a long time, is we took slides of all the paintings that got in the show after they were selected. A lot of time was spent on what to do with the non-selected paintings and what to call them. <laughs> <laughs> the rejects. You, the rejects the, you don't want to call them rejects, and I remember... The non-selected? Non yeah, when we decided the term non-selective was a more positive... Mm -hmm. Adjective. <laughs> Our you way know, of describing it. What used to be really a lot of fun is when we actually brought the paintings, you know, to a couple uh -huh. paintings to be juried. Then we ha we displayed all the ones that were not selected right. at right. the oh, side. That's I right. Right. The yes. side yes. And it used to yeah. be one of the most fun things. You'd go in and say, what? Well, that didn't that. get it in the yeah. show? Yeah. Or, yeah. Right. I mean, we all, you know, you couldn't <laughs> help but to have mm -hmm. sure. mm -hmm. right. half the show or a fourth of the show that you thought should have been reversed uh -huh. or whatever, uh -huh. especially yeah. if it was your painting that was in the <laughs> An important component of the Oregon Watercolor Society is the 100 Club. The interest from this endowment fund provides the basis for WSO's cash awards to artists. Gloria mm -hmm. and I were driving to Roseburg and talking about what a horrible job that was. And I think I started looking over and we went by Oregon State and stuff and I thought, you know, lots of organizations have an endowment fund of some kind, the symphony or, or colleges mm -hmm. or whatever. They are using the interest. They're not spending the capital. What if we started something like that? It's not so much that, I mean, that, that they've gotten bigger or better, but the fact is to get cash and to have it available every show. Right. It's a miracle. Well, there was peer jurying for yeah. three or four years. Do you remember that? Yeah, I dropped out. <laughs> you dropped I said, out. I don't like that. I don't yeah. like peer jurying, jurying your friends in or yeah. out or whatever. So I said, I'm not going to enter anymore. So for three years, I was out of some. Good for enter. you. WSO hosts two major exhibitions and conventions each year in locations throughout the state. We're here in Newport, Oregon. Um, Newport offers a wonderful gallery at the Newport Visual Arts Center, and that's one of the reasons that our group chose to come here for our convention. Moving forward into the future, the Watercolor Society of Oregon will continue the activities that are in its stated mission by traveling to all parts of the state with high-quality art exhibits by our best painters, by providing educational opportunities for its members and the communities they live and paint in, by facilitating networking and peer support through local critique groups and workshops, and friendships. This is an exceptional, exceptional organization. When you look around to the other states, there's some that have looked to the Watercolor Society of Oregon to kind of um, progress themselves. Well, Tom, in these interviews, I've been asking people what being part of WSO has meant to their own growth and development as artists. But in your case, <laughs> I feel I just need to say thank you. Oh, yeah, well, I think. Both creating yeah. and for supporting this organization so long, you've left an incredible, yeah. enduring legacy. 
to Oregon, and to art, up, yeah. and to Oregon artists. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate very much. that. Yeah.